Welcome to this week's overview for level B. We are going to be going through lessons five through eight. I sure wish that I was able to be with you face to face so I can hear how your week went. I'm really hoping that it went well. Those of you that are coming into level B having not done right start before, you may want your child to do a little bit more work on supertizing. I have some extra things you could do for them, and I will show you that at the end. So last week, when we went over materials, I showed you all the materials in person. Starting this week, I'm going to show a PowerPoint listing the materials, and then if there's anything new, I'll pull that out in person to explain a little bit more about it. So these are the materials that you'll need for lessons five through eight. You'll need your tally sticks, the abacus, the worksheets, the math card game book, a calendar showing the month of September, and then your balance. And you'll also need a dry erase board. So the dry erase board actually came in your set of manipulatives. You could just pull that one out. You'll be using that. One of the manipulatives you'll need is the math balance. Some of you may have already gotten out of the box and have put it together. Some of you have not. I'm just going to show you if I've already gotten out of the box, it comes in these three pieces. And you're going to need this piece as well as there's four of these. These are in a little plastic baggie that should be taped underneath the base. All right, so you start with these two pieces. It's pretty simple. You put this in. You want to put it in so this is kind of parallel with this. You're going to bring this in and line up the hole here. You're going to slip the pin through. And then you put the little cap on the end. Then it's ready to go. Now, if you notice, I already have two of these little balancer things over here, but I want to show you it's pretty simple to go on. If you bring it up over here, you can just slide it right on. Now there are some times where these balances can be a little bit temperamental. And you may find that you need to put one of these clips up on the top. And so it's a little bit harder. You got to kind of press it in. But you may find that that's what you're going to have to do to get it to balance. And it, you're not going to know until you put it all together to see if it will balance or not. If you have to have your clips up here or if you could put your clips down here. So I have the balance with my clips on the bottom. I'm just going to lay them over here on this table. I'm going to see if it will balance as is. Now, if you have trouble with it not balancing, you may have to move these white clips around to see. And that's where you may have to take them off the bottom and put them onto the top. It really is going to depend on your balance. Lastly are the weights. There are pegs on the balance and that's what these, that's what these are for. So you can store your weights on the base of your balance. So I have all the weights on the bottom of my balance. I'm going to go ahead and sit it back on the shelf. Go ahead and turn to lesson six. Before we get into the lessons and what you're going to be doing, I would like to just take a little bit of time and explain how the math card game book works. If you notice in the explanations, it shows you the different chapters that are in the math card game book. And then there's a letter in parentheses besides the name. What that is going to show you is where you're going to find the game. So if you look at materials, it says Math Card Game Book A2. If you look down below, you can look that A is for addition. So if you notice my Math Card Game Book, I have some tabs on the top. And these tabs are partitioning each of the chapters. What I would like to do is get the kind that come on the side that I could just stick on the side and they're big enough where I could write addition, number sense, multiplication. So when I do that, I will show you. But for now, I just have the tabs and these work fine too. I'm going to open up to addition. I know addition is the second chapter. 
And then you look over here, here we have A1, you see, oh, there's A2. This is a game we're going to play in lesson six. I went ahead, I underlined it in blue, just as a reminder to me that this is a game we're playing in level B. I'm also gonna take you to our website. If you like to be super organized and prepared and you really wanna know what's coming up, I've got something for you. So here we are at Right Start's website, which is found at rightstartmath.com. If you hover on resources, go down to teaching support and click, scroll all the way down, it says here, math journals, game listing by levels for right start to click on that arrow, scroll down to B, and then there you have it. It shows you the lesson, what game you'll be playing, and the name of the game. So let's go back, and I'm gonna show you what I did to my math card game book. So in the back of the math card games book, open it up to the index. So what I did is I highlighted the games that we will be playing in level B. If you notice, there are some that are in red. Those are what are being played in level A. And, and then you'll see some where they're both. That just means they're played in level A and level B. So something else you may notice that I did is you can see a B in front of some games and it's highlighted yellow. That's because we have a blog that gives more information on how to play the game. That's the B in yellow. And some, we even have a video, and that's where you see the V, and I highlighted in green. This is not something you have to do. I just know that some of you like to be super organized, and that is fine. This is perfect, you'll know ahead of time. Some of you like to fly by the seat of your pants, that's okay, I've been in both places. I'm going to take us back to the website for a minute because I want you to see how you can tell if a game has a blog or a video. All right, so we're back to the website. If you look on the top, just click on blog. And then what this blog is, it just has the different games that we play. There's some other things. There's some information that Dr. Cotter has written. There's also some lessons out of the manuals that have been given more explanation, especially, you know, when we get a lot of calls in on a specific lesson, then we like to explain it a little bit better. So the easiest way to do this is you go up to search, you're going to type in the name of the game. So I'm going to type in long chain solitaire, just because I know it has both a blog and a video. So if you look here, you'll see, here's our blog. I click on the blog. One way you'll know if it has a video. Is that you'll notice at the end it has a video or it may say within the blog itself that there is a video. I'm going to do one more. The game is can you find it's a game you'll be playing. So therefore I know I don't have additional blog that will help me figure out how to play the game. Hopefully this information will help you. I think it's nice to know that we do have a blog about some of the games that give additional instruction and pictures on how to play because I don't know about y'all, I have a hard time reading directions for games. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret, although it's not super secret because it's actually written in the front of this book. I want you to take a second and turn with me. It's the page right after the table of contents. I know how we are and I, I know how we want to get started and a lot of times we want to read everything but we don't have time to read everything so I'm going to point something out to you. This page is on how to use the Right Start Game Manual and then to the right you'll see that there is a log for playing the games, a game log. You don't have to do this, it's up to you. Sometimes it's nice to make note of the games you played. You could put a little check mark by it if you really liked it. You could put a little X or a frown face if you didn't, or maybe you have to adapt the game. It's, there's so many different things that you could make note of, which will be helpful, especially if you have other children who will be coming up into Right Start and using this material. So that way you'll kind of have a little memory helps you figure, helps you know for the future.
I want to point you out to number five that talks about it's best to play the game with the cards in hand as you're reading the instructions. That is so true. It is not easy to read game instructions. Any game I've ever played, whether it was a game out of the math card game book, whether it was a board game, reading game instructions is challenging. But if you get the pieces out, you you lay it out as you're reading it, you do as it says as you're reading it, something just clicks and it makes it easier to understand. Just know that if you've read the game, you've taken the pieces, you tried to play the game, if there was a blog, you read about the blog, it didn't help you and you still have questions, if you notice in number six, there's a phone number you can call. The office hours are central time, 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday. They close at 12.30 on Friday. Feel free to call and there will be someone there that can help you figure out how to play the game. So let's get started. Turn to lesson five. Notice it's still review. Here we're going to be partitioning and using a part whole circle set. It asks you to draw part whole circle sets on a marker board. However, I just want to give you another option. This is a part whole circle set. You can print these out. You just have to go back to our website under resources, go down to teaching support where you, where I showed you to go for the games. There's a place where you can print out the appendices for it's really for the first edition, but that's okay because you'll find this in there go and print one off. You might want to print a couple off. I have mine in a page protector, just slides right in. Then you can use a dry erase marker. You can write on here as you're partitioning and just come on in when you're done and erase it. Be a lot easier to erase if I had a harder surface behind it. So either way, you could draw these on the marker board or you can use this. So in this lesson, it's gonna talk about partitioning some numbers. And all partitioning is, is taking apart a number. So for example, five. What are some different ways that you can make five? So if I have my abacus, I have my five. What are some ways? Oh, one and four. So you're going to write a one and a four in the small circles. You could do a two and a three. You could do a three and a two. And then a four and a one. Those are the different ways to partition five. Well, there's really one more, but see if your child can figure it out. On to lesson six. Review lesson six, partitioning 10. Don't miss the warm up portion, especially that comes after game. Children sometimes struggle what number comes after if they're not saying them in order. We really want children to say the next number without having to think about it. In the activities, we're gonna be partitioning 10. You're gonna be using tally sticks, you're gonna use your abacus, you're gonna use the whole part circles. Learning the facts that equal 10 is what's going to allow your child to excel in learning those facts that are over 10. So spend time on this. Some of you may have to spend more than one day going over this. It's gonna depend on your child. I was gonna to talk to you about the game in the math card game book, but I'm gonna to talk to you about something a little bit different. If you notice, my coil is longer here. It's not up enough here. I can help you fix this so it won't be a problem. I should have done this as soon as I got this book, but I forgot. But that's perfect because now I get to show you. So give me a second as I get the coil up to the top. All right, I did it. I got it around. So now it's even. The best thing you could do is you take this edge and you crimp it. Now you might want to use pliers. I don't have any handy, so I'm just gonna use my fingers. Do you see how that, well, it's kind of hard to tell. But I crimped it so it won't go through as easy. Crimping these on the end will keep the coils from unspiraling on your books. You can do that with your manuals, with the worksheets, with all of them. 
one of the things I should have pointed out in the materials is you're going to need the basic number cards. This is what they look like. They have a green fractal design on one side. And if you notice, the other side just has a number in green. Something that was pointed out to me, and I didn't even think about it, I have a relative who is a public school teacher for first grade. And she invited me to her school to play some math card games with the kids, which was a blast. I had so much fun. When I was showing her these cards, she thought it was really interesting that there was nothing on here for the students to count. So there's not a one that they could count to reinforce. Or like here, here's eight. There's no dots. There's no design at all to count. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize that myself. So I just wanted to point it out to y'all because when children have number sense, they don't need numbers to count because they know what that number is. Review lesson seven, go to the dump. We're going to be reviewing facts up to 10 and getting to play a game that's going to reinforce it. The students will be using their abacus to work on partitioning 10. Also know that when you play a game and they might not be proficient with their facts yet, it's okay to allow them to use the abacus if needed. We also have a game app for this game. So I'm going to take you to our website again to show you where you can find it. All right, we're back on our website. I want you to go to curriculum at the top. Go down where it says apps. Click. And then you will see game apps. This is corners. There's a fraction game. But this is the app I'm talking about. It's called Go to 10. I don't know why as an app we have to call it go to 10 when in the game book we call it go to the dump, but it is what it is. It's fun. You can use it on iPhone, iPad, or your Android. Lesson eight is introducing the math balance. This is one of my most favorite tools that Right Start has. I would recommend pulling this out ahead of time and giving your children some time just to play around with it. So I'm going to demonstrate the math balance. I'm going to leave it where it's at just because it's balanced. You can see it. So when you're working with your children, it's going to ask you to put one on this side and then ask them, what do you need to do to get it to balance on the other side? And kids love the 10. I want to give you a word of warning. Be gentle. The pegs on here don't have really big lips or clips or whatever you want to call it to keep the weights from falling off. So they're going to fall off pretty easy the rougher you are with this tool. I like to ask the kids, what is this balance? And hopefully they're going to see because 10 equals 10. So on the second page, it talks about children partitioning five. Some children may be able to use the math balance on partition five without any problems. Some children may need to do it first on the abacus and then bring it over and do it on the balance. For example, so here's my five. I'm going to partition five and I've partitioned it into three and two. So then I can come on to the balance. And I'm partitioning five, five's my whole, and I broke it down into two smaller pieces, three and two. And if it's right, it's going to balance. But this is what's cool about this tool. Let's say you're not gonna use the abacus. Ask your children to try to figure it out on their own. So maybe they don't know, and say they do four and two. Is it balanced? No, so something's not correct. We just have to figure out what it is. So maybe they'll do this. They're realizing, hmm, it's not getting balanced. So they might bring it back this way and they see that it's balanced or 
let's just say they leave the four, they may want to move the other one around. I love this tool because you don't have to say, oh, you're wrong. They just have to look and see, is it balanced? If it's balanced, it's correct. If it's not balanced, it's not correct. Down towards the bottom, it says that facts practice should always provide a strategy for the learners to figure out a forgotten answer. That's one of the reasons why Right Start is really big on providing strategies, not just relying on memory. Not all children can memorize. Some of us, and myself included, there's some facts, even at my age, I don't have memorized, even though I've said them hundreds of times. But if I haven't used it in a little while, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have to think. Well, I have strategies that helps me to figure it out. And that's what's important. And that's what we want children to do is have strategies to help them figure out the answer. Also, the abacus is really important in using because we don't want children to rely on counting to get their answer because it's tedious and it it is prone to error if you miscount. Counting is also habit forming and for some of you who have children who count you're going to find it's going to take a little bit of time to get them not to count but stick with it as someone who is a counter that being able to figure out strategies without counting is so much better. So keep working with them. I mentioned at the beginning of this overview, for those of you that have children that could use a little bit more work with subitizing, I have some ideas. I'm going to take you back to the website. So on the website, if you go down to resources, go to teaching support, I want you to scroll all the way down. You're going to look for the appendices for level B, and then you can print out these finger patterns, the tally stick patterns, the bead card patterns. Print two pages out for each of these patterns, and if possible, print them out on different colored paper. So for the finger patterns, maybe you print out two copies on white. The tally patterns, maybe you have some blue paper. And then for the bead pattern cards, you may have some yellow paper and you can print out two copies of those. These cards can then be cut apart and you can play some games with them. Then in your game book, in number sense, there are some games in here that you can play with your children. There's finger cards in order, there's finger card memory, there's tally sticks in order, mixed up cards. Your children are old enough, mix up the tally sticks with your bead cards and then they have to match them. So there's some other ideas that you could do if you have children that need a little bit more work with subitizing. I hope you all have a great week and I'll see you next week when we go over lessons nine through 12. Until then.